What's your favorite part of working with this guard group? Mm. Uh, just how all the guys come in and, and they're coachable, whether it be from other schools, right? Guys that come from the transfer portal. And then just how they buy in. You know, all the guards that we've had here the past seven years I've been here. And that's the uh, time where I first started working on them seven years ago. All those guys have had great work at um, – they come in, they're receptive to the teaching at uh, Coach Sampson, hands down. And then uh, when I get with them and I work with them day in and day out, they're just receptive to learning. And, and they, they're putting in the work and they're trying to get better uh, individually and, and to help the team. Players say they have to learn how to practice hard. And it's freshmen and then guys that transfer in. They, they've never had to practice this way. The normal person hears that and they think all college athletes practice hard. But what is it that players need to learn when they get here? Just how to compete, right? It's, it's one thing saying that, hey, I got to learn to practice hard or you know, those guys go really hard at practice. You go watch, you know, high school practice or you watch different colleges practice. And, and the difference is here is, you know, when coach talks about competing versus playing hard, and this is, this is a difference, right? You know, you got a guy chasing after a loose ball. He's running really fast after it. Well, those, both of the guys that are chasing after the ball are going hard, but which one is willing to get on the floor and dive and, you know, get a brush burn up? you know, hurt, um, you know, maybe even, you know, come up with an injury because you gave it everything you had. That's giving everything you had, and that's the difference between, you know, playing hard and competing. Okay. Um, LJ and Jamal are pretty good at what they do. So what do you focus on with them in order to improve? Well, uh, every kid, that every guard that comes into our program, they, they need something different. Right. You, you got some guys, LJ is an elite shooter. He came in an elite shooter. Right. That, that kid scored over 3,000 something points in high school. He was really, really good at Baylor, at mm -hmm. shooting. Uh, so for him, is, is being able to play out of pick and rolls. Right. You saw the game against Texas State that he played in where, you know, he might have hit uh, JoJo Tugler on a pocket pass or a long roll and, you know, made him better, right? It's one thing, him being able to uh, score baskets from the outside, uh, you know, getting the paint and shoot a floater, but we've developed them into, you know, a pick and roll guy, right? Uh, coming off of pin downs, you know, reading the big that's hedging and, and then getting it in the paint and also making other guys better on the outside, whether it be Jamal, Emmanuel, right? And so, you know, Every guy's different. Jamal needed to improve his shooting. He's right now, he's at 38%. And so it's the work that he's put in, back to your first question, and, you know, what makes it a joy is those guys' character. We got high character kids, mm -hmm. right? Uh, if, if you don't, coach says it all the time, you don't want problems, then you don't recruit them. And so we, we've done a, a great job at recruiting the right guys. That's why we've been so successful. But the joy is, you know, having those guys, one, you being a teacher, like in the classroom, but having the students be able to receive what you're teaching them. Mm -hmm. So. Speaking of recruiting the right guys, Galen wanted me to ask you this. <laughs> he said, what is the toughest thing you've had to learn being a coach? The toughest thing I've had to learn. Mm. That's, that's a really, really good question. Uh, is, uh, you know, you, you can't be afraid of confrontation, right? Uh, Coach and Casey and Hollis and Kellen, they were here before I got here. So the hardest thing for me is coming into a program, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and and you kind of the new guy. And so, you have to develop relationships with those guys that have already been in the system. And so you have to learn things on the fly. Although I play for coach, some of his, you know, uh, philosophies have changed, you know, uh, in terms of his, his offensive strategy, 
right? Him being in the NBA. So I, I had to adapt very quickly. And as soon as I got here, he put me right in charge of the guards. So I, I think to answer Galen's question, the hardest thing for me is trying to adjust and build those relationships. And uh, thank God I was able to do that quickly. How close is Damian Dunn? He's coming. Uh, I mean, it's a process, you know. You you look at these games, and, and and some people might look at it and say, you know, he's inconsistent. He doesn't fit. You know, you you have all the naysayers, but we understand as as you know, coaches and our program is a process. I mean, you go back and look at Quentin Grimes his first year. Quentin was really good, but he had some games where he wasn't so good. He was inconsistent at times. But it's all a part of development. We hang our hats on development guys. And so we don't get down if he has a bad game or a couple bad games, right, in, in terms of, like, his statistics. Because we know that's going to change. We know we're really good at what we do. And I know it's just a matter of time before, you know, he gets going. Where has he improved the most since he got here? His, his, his intensity. His intensity. I see it each and every day. Uh, again, I go back to Quentin. Quentin Harris, I think, if you look back at it, he averaged – maybe two rebounds a game his first year. Well, the next year he averaged seven. So it, it takes time. Everybody wants this microwave thing. He transferred from Temple. He's a really good player. Uh, hey, we 13 and 0 right now. And that, that kid's a part of us being 13 and 0. So to the outside, it might look like he's inc inconsistent, but he's been, you know, consistent with his effort and it's gotten better and better and better each day. Emmanuel was at 79% from the line and said he wanted to get better. He wanted to get to 90%. And you've been working with him on that. Yeah. What is, besides reps, what is he doing that's helping him get better? From the free throw line or yeah, overall? the free throw line. Oh, free throw line is just, is just reps and time. You know, how much time are you putting into something? It's like riding a bike. You know, you, you get on a bike for the first time, you fall off. But then you get on it the next day, the next day, the next day, before you know you're riding it, before you know you're riding it with no hands, right? So it's the right repetition, just the right amount of focus. You know, some guys can go down there and shoot free throws, and they'll make 10. Uh, they'll try to rush and get out of that. Uh, you know, how fast can I get out of it? You know, it's quality time that you put in and the focus that goes into it. I think another thing that helps all of our guys is the pressure that coach puts on them at practice, right? Every practice at the end of practice, we, we line up on two ends, and those guys have to make a certain amount before we get out of practice. I think that helps all of our guys. Okay. And final thing, what's the most recent thing you've learned from Kelvin that's going to help you when you become a head coach? Well, I don't know if it's recent, but um, – being around him as long as I've been around him and just specifically talking about these seven seasons is, uh, you know, he talks about guys not having a bad day. And some people might think that's just a saying. He comes in every single day and he's locked in every single day. It's not a day where you say he's had a bad day. You know, there's been days where, you know, we all get a little cold and, don't feel as well. And you would think, you know, a guy would take, especially been doing it for so long and been so successful, it, you know, wouldn't be at his best that day. He's at his best that day. Uh, you know, it's, you know, I, I hate to compare him to uh, Michael Jordan when he had the flu. Mike was still at his best, but that, that's what I think of. He, he's at his best every single day, and he doesn't take a day off. And so uh, that's something I, you know, I've learned. Um, I believe I have, you know, great work ethic, and uh, I'll take a lot of what I learned from Coach Sampson to one day when I become head coach.